In this module, we're going to talk about eccentricity in the form of a cable resultant force. So when we change standard abutments for more optimized designs, generally shortening the ramp and raising the anchor, which I've shown in this short of very well drawn diagram here, uh, we find that abnormal cable angles can begin to govern our designs. Abnormal being outside and steeper than the range we see in our standard drawings. Because of this, we do have concerns about the angle of the cable force resultant. The general idea here is that we want the tower load to remain in complete compression along its base. Sounds familiar? This is the same goal as the tower overturning check. And this is why I mentioned in the introduction module how these two checks should be really closely related. Now, before diving into the math, remember that we have a structural concrete column surrounded by brick formwork which I've drawn uh, a diagram of here. The brick formwork is, well, formwork, and it is not designed to take any of the load from the tower column. So we will reduce our sectional area down to the effective width and effective depth that is just the footprint of the tower column structural concrete. All of these dimensions can be read off the standard tower drawings or calculated, but I've reiterated some of the most important ones here on the diagram. Remember that the formwork width is a standard 15 centimeters for brick, making our effective depth of 70 centimeters and our effective width of 40 centimeters. The resultant angle in white is going to be the angle off of vertical formed by the vector sum of the resultant vertical forces, PV, and the resultant horizontal forces due to friction, pH. And I've labeled that resultant in magenta as delta. And notice we have a new term here. Instead of H tower, which we had before, we have H column. This is going to be different. This is going to be the height above the stage one concrete as shown in the drawings. So it is isolating just the tower column uh, a not just the tower column, but also just a single tower column um, for analysis here. <clears throat> now, to actually perform the check, we need to calculate the resultant angle, the maximum eccentricity allowed, and the calculated eccentricity to compare. There is no factor of safety here. We are only checking uh, that the calculated is less than the allowable. And the resultant angle we can find as the arctan of the ratio of horizontal over vertical forces, which is simply trigonometry. So I've drawn out the equation for you here. Uh, our delta is arctan of pH over PV. And I've shown here just a small diagram or little um, thumbnail diagram, if you will, that shows the um, vertical and horizontal force. And now that white term P is our resultant and it's going to form an angle delta. <clears throat> now, we have a diagram to help explain where the maximum and calculated eccentricity lie, which I have drawn out here for you. <clears throat> the maximum eccentricity, as long as they're using the standard tower detail, will always be half of the effective tower depth plus an offset. So, the effective over 2 plus an offset will always give us 0.45 meters. The calculated eccentricity will be the horizontal distance from the force incidence calculated as the column height multiplied by the tangent of the resultant angle. So, h column times the tangent of the resultant angle. And I've drawn e calculated e max onto this diagram for you. A quick note here, like I said before, um, because we have a different, we have a couple of different tower heights um, from the top of the tower to the bottom where it meets the first tier of the standard tower detail is 1.5 meters. The top of the walkway hump is 0 0.5 meters high, but the walkway cables are thread at a height of 0 0.4 meters, which is the location of the walkway forces. So for the purpose of analyzing a single tower column, we'll use that H column value of 1.3 meters, which is the distance, again, from the top of the tower to the top of the stage one concrete, 
and this is noted on the drawings, and you can reference those. There is no reinforcing bar connecting the tower columns into the walkway hump until the stage one concrete. So we'll conservatively assume uh, that, or we'll conservatively consider that this is the possible length of an entire tower column that needs to be analyzed. So we take a moment to look at this diagram. I've labeled everything out for you, including the top of the stage one concrete. And I really would recommend you go into the standard tower details as a reference. They're linked here. They're linked in the previous module. Um, and go and derive these values for yourself so you can get an idea of, of what they are. It's really likely that you'll be using a standard tower detail. In fact, uh, we require it. And if you are considering changing anything on the tower, you really need to speak to us first because this detail almost never needs to be changed. Um, so it is likely you'll be using all of these standard values. And finally, we can check that our calculated eccentricity is less than our maximum eccentricity. And like I said before in the previous lecture, this should really coincide well with our tower overturning checks.